The study is in the journal Lancet Oncology. Evans says the research introduces a new way to study paleopathology in the fossil record. This discovery definitely takes dinosaurs, which we often think of as almost mythical powerful creatures, and, I think, it shows that they were real animals, and it's really unique and sobering that they got diseases similar to the ones that humans get today, and they would have suffered greatly from these diseases, and so it brings them to life in a really unusual way. That's something we'd love to examine, whether the local ecosystem and the associated organisms with the sloth, perhaps that changes. A lot of organisms can't readily change their day. To night activity, you know, their survival strategy is based on one or the other, so it may well be that change or that association with daytime as opposed to nighttime, or cathamerality, does change some of the organisms that are associated with it. Duffield's most important piece of equipment for this research may be a comfortable chair. Charles Darwin is most famous for his finches, from whose beaks he gleaned the idea that a single species might radiate into many. But he studied other attributes of birds, too like the rhythmic sounds some species made during courtship by fluttering, shaking, or rattling their feathers together. Since Darwin, there's been this fact that birds produce sounds with wings and tails or flight feathers. So there's species of monocans that do this sound, there's hummingbirds that do this sound. It took us months and months of toil to sequence a single viral genome, now people can do that in a matter of hours. And the rate at which people have been able to sort of make progress on understanding SARS-CoV-2 to an and COVID-19 is just spectacular, Rice spoke this morning on a web press conference from Rockefeller University. So I think it's, it's it's taught us a lot of things about science in general, which there's really a pressing problem. We should have you know mobilize people all around the world to sort of work on these problems. Really you know great progress can be made. You know people would love to have a cure in a week or so vaccine in a week. I mean that's not feasible but the speed with which with therapeutics and vaccines will be developed as far as COVID-2 and COVID-19 is going to be spectacular. So the phone company designed phones for use globally with this added feature. Ethnographic research has also been carried out in computer companies. In one company, IT systems administrators were observed for several weeks. It was found that a large colleagues in order to amount of their work involved communicating with solve problems, but that they didn't have a standard way of exchanging information from spreadsheets and so on. So the team came up with an idea for software that would help them to do this.
carbon-rich soil is dark, crumbly and fertile, and retains some water. But erosion can occur if soil is dry, which is a likely effect if it contains inadequate amounts of carbon. Erosion is of course bad for people trying to grow crops or breed animals on that terrain. Studying soils in Africa so devoid of organic. In the 1970s and 80s, lol was matter that the ground had become extremely hard, like cement. There he met a pioneer in the study of global warming, who suggested that carbon from the soil had moved into the atmosphere. This is now looking increasingly likely. First, it was pets, then fish. Now it's poultry and pigs. The list of animals allowed to feed on insects is growing. A new EU law authorizing the use of insect protein in poultry and pig feed came into force earlier this month. A significant milestone for an industry keen to worm its way into the animal feed business. Since a ban on processed animal protein imposed in 2001 in the wake of the mad cow crisis, soy and fish meal have become the bedrock of animal feed in Europe. It was another roller coaster week for energy prices. After OPEC and its allies resist calls to increase output, the price of Brent crude surpassed $80 per barrel and reached its highest level in three years. The cartel said it would stick to the gradual increases in output it agreed to over the summer. The energy shortage rattled other financial markets too, as investors worried about the fallout. In America and Europe, government bond yields climbed. In Britain, the yield on 10-year gilts jumped to its highest since May 2019. Executive Vice President of the U.S. Government's Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, David Bohegian and other U.S. government officials traveled to Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia in August to promote U.S. investment in those countries. OPIC is the U.S. government's development finance institution. It mobilizes private capital to help address critical development challenges and in doing so, advances U.S. foreign policy and national security priorities. On August 14, the U.S. delegation met with Armenian Minister of Economic Development and Investments Artsvik Minisian. The World Health Organization says 12 years ago, India alone was responsible for almost 70% of all polio cases around the world. It calls India's success against polio one significant achievements in public health. WHO officials say of the most. India's accomplishment proved the crippling disease can be eliminated in even the most challenging circumstances with a strong political commitment. The number of polio cases has decreased from an estimated 350,000 a year to 33, since the WHO launched its global eradication campaign in 1988.
It might sound obvious that if you want to improve a robot's software, you should improve its software. Agrim Gupta of Stanford University, however, begs to differ. He thinks you can also improve a robot software by improving its hardware that is, by letting the hardware adapt itself to the software's capabilities. As they describe in Nature Communications, he and his colleagues have devised a way of testing this idea. In doing so, they have brought to robotics the principles of evolution by natural selection. They also cast the spotlight on an evolutionary idea that dates from the 1890s, but which has hitherto proved hard to demonstrate. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the first part of its latest assessment report. The Earth is warming. Even with a drastic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions temperatures will probably be 1.5 degrees Celsius above their late 19th century levels by 2050. Climate change is underway, the report laments, with all the environmental consequences that brings. The extent of the damage depends on the cumulative buildup of emissions and can be limited if the world strives for net zero carbon emissions. The Democratic Republic of the Congo will hold an election in December, hopefully leading to a peaceful democratic transfer of power for the first time in the country's history. Sitting President Joseph Kabila came to power in 2001, having succeeded his father, Laurent Désiré Kabila, after his assassination. Joseph Kabila was elected as president in 2006 for a five-year term, and re-elected in 2011. Though his second term ended in 2016 and the constitution prevents him from seeking a third term, elections were not DRC held and Kabila remained in power. On the face of things, it seems both absurd and unfair that large American companies regularly whittle down their tax bills, taking advantage of every loophole on offer. One study found that at least 55 big companies incurred no federal taxes at all on their profits in 2020. A proposal being discussed as The Economist went to press, and as the Democratic Party scrambled to fund its social spending package, seems to offer a popular solution, a minimum tax on corporate earnings as reported to shareholders, rather than as massaged down when reported to tax collectors. A hormone called relaxin helps loosen up pregnant women's hips. Without it, the pain of delivery would be unbearable. It's job done, however, relaxing lingers in female bodies for up to a year, when softer ligaments make new mothers more prone to injury, as Jessica Ennis Hill, an Olympic champion heptathlete, discovered in training after giving birth in 2014. Five years later Dame Jessica started Jenny's, a fitness app to help other women perform safe postnatal workouts. 
It now lets users optimize workouts for the different phases of their menstrual cycles and has just concluded a successful funding round. It was another roller coaster week for energy prices. After OPEC and its allies resist calls to increase output, the price of Brent crude surpassed S80 per barrel and reached its highest level in three years. The cartel said it would stick to the gradual increases in output it agreed to over the summer. The energy shortage rattled other financial markets too, as investors worried about the fallout. In America and Europe government bond yields climbed. In Britain, the yield on 10-year gilts jumped to its highest since May 2019. First, it was pets, then fish. Now it's poultry and pigs. The list of animals allowed to feed on insects is growing. The new EU law authorizing the use of insect protein in poultry and pig feed came into force earlier this month, a significant milestone for an industry keen to worm its way into the animal feed business. Since a ban on processed animal protein imposed in 2001 in the wake of the mad cow crisis, soy and fish meal have become the bedrock of animal feed in Europe. Carbon-rich soil is dark, crumbly and fertile, and retains some water. But erosion can occur if soil is dry, which is a likely effect if it contains inadequate amounts of carbon. Erosion is of course bad for people trying to grow crops or breed animals on that terrain. In the 1970s and 80s, Lau was studying soils in Africa so devoid of organic matter that the ground had become extremely hard, like cement. There he met a pioneer in the study of global warming, who suggested that carbon from the soil had moved into the atmosphere. This is now looking increasingly likely. So the phone company designed phones for use globally with this added feature. Ethnographic research has also been carried out in computer companies. In one company, IT systems administrators were observed for several weeks. It was found that large colleagues in order to amount of their work involved communicating with solve problems, but that they didn't have a standard way of exchanging information from spreadsheets and so on. So the team came up with an idea for software that would help them to do this.